graduation textile conservation project has now ended and this film will cover the final elements of the restoration process, including putting graduation back together, the installation, along with other projects which have been explored. I'm Emily Green and I'm the Heritage Collections Manager at the University of Sheffield. In this film, I'm continuing the journey towards the final part of putting graduation back together after its two-year absence. I start with a visit to textile conservator Melanie Leach in Norfolk. I then follow MoMart technicians, reinstalling the whole structure back into the library, to a small celebration in Western Bank Library for the return of graduation, which Diana attended, sharing her joy at seeing her work fully restored. Graduation was removed due to the degradation of the plastics and the true colours of the faculties not being represented correctly in the artwork, having lost their vibrancy due to the plastics turning yellow. Throughout the project I've continued following the conservation elements. Having acquired new PETG plastic to replace the old PVC, I've come to Melanie's studio to see how the pieces of graduation are being put back together. The stitching of the tubes and panels was carried out by Moore's Classic Car Trim in Norfolk. They have the industrial sewing machines that are required to sew through the PETG, not damage the fabrics and ensure everything is secured. PETG use has the brand name of Melanex, which is measured and prepared by Catherine Moore. The sections were put together exactly the same as the originals. The methodology used was very meticulous and required a lot of focus and accuracy. The faculty material is carefully placed on top of the PETG. The material is smoothed out so there are no creases and once the top and bottom Melanex sheets are in place, the tubes are then folded and pegs are used to secure the tubes and then stapled, ready to be permanently sewn together. The type of machine used is a Seiko heavy duty walking foot machine. The needle is a 17 by 135 and thread is a 20 metric thread, used top and bottom which is of a heavy duty thread that can last longer, be handled and limits the risk of the thread fraying and jamming in the machine. The tubes are pulled through the machine as it is sewn together with Catherine guiding it through. Now that the last two tubes have been made, Melanie adds them to the rest of the group in her studio. She staples them to complete the section and leaves a 6cm gap between the staples for stitching guidance and a 2cm margin from the edge for the placing of the tubes. The last staple is inserted. All the faculty tubes are now completed. Moving on to the textile panels, the final panel is being prepared for sewing onto the 1mm PETG plastic backing. Here Melanie explains the process of applying the textile to the back panel. This is going to be our guideline for where the panel actually starts, where it sits onto the PETG. A spray adhesive is used around the edges. The panel is placed on top of the PETG and Melanie smooths the whole panel down with her hand, checking it is flat to the corners. One side on the long edge is known as the fly side and will not be stitched as this will be for flexibility and allow the textile panel to curve with the plastic and create the wave effect that makes graduation unique. Melanie explains about some staining left from a water leak and why it's not being removed. There isn't really anything that we can do about this um, this watermark now because it's happened and it's actually stained the fabric almost like sort of dyeing it really it's it it's fixed in there and anything that we do to try and remove that it will probably end up making it worse so um, the whole thing is is um, stable enough and um, is not causing any other harm so we're just leaving that in, in place. The panel will now be taken to Catherine to be stitched later, once the adhesive has had time to cure. Now all the pieces have been put back together, everything has been wrapped and ready to be transported back to the university for its final journey from Norfolk to its installation back in Sheffield. To install graduation back into Western Bank Library, Momo were engaged again as they removed the entire artwork in 2021 and knew the project well. They start by unveiling the timber framework which had been covered over by fabric and prepare the front sheet of polycarbonate. Each numbered section of faculty silk tubes and embroidered panels were carefully unwrapped in the library main reading room and carried into the main hall by the technicians. Melanie checks the order of the panels and tube columns. All panels were then carefully cleaned by Melanie. 
The top sheet of polycarbonate is cleaned and then placed on top of the fabric. All sections are then carefully moved over to the technicians on the scaffold tower. Each section had to be carefully fixed so that the wave effect was accomplished and the whole seven panels and sections of faculty tubes fitted exactly on the timber frame. I asked senior technician Stuart Brunton about installing the panels. We thought the larger pieces would be harder to install, but I actually found out that the smaller pieces were more complicated because there was more tension on them and trying to curve them in the, over a shorter distance and then fix them. It took just under three days to install graduation. There were many processes involved to ensure the sections were put together correctly. I asked Stuart and Melanie how they feel now graduation is back on the wall and what do they think to it now it's been fully restored? I think the installation went well. There's a lot of things to work out beforehand, so it was quite complicated and it started quite slowly. But then um, once we'd kind of worked out the, the process, then things started to speed up and we kind of caught back up with ourselves. And now I'm really happy with the way it looks. It's good to see it finally back up on the wall. Um, it, it's really nice to see the colours, just without the kind of the fading of the, the plastic and everything to be renewed and refreshed. I think it looks much more modern. It, it's amazing. The first thing is a relief that it, it's up. I sort of couldn't imagine it, you know, how this was actually going to happen because there are so many unknowns. It's been a whole learning process all the way through and it's exciting. It looks crisp, it looks fresh and I'm absolutely thrilled with it. I think it looks amazing. I can't really believe that the, the original install was done by one person on their own, just sort of getting help now and again because there was like six of us plus Melanie doing conservation and Emily doing lots of kind of organising. So, you know, between the eight of us alone, it was, it was a lot of hard work over the, the four days, so. This was a collaborative process to ensure everything would fit back together. But due to good teamwork and problem solving along the way, graduation is now back in its original location in Western Bank Library. The project journey has taken a few digressions that have been fruitful, showing how diverse Diana's work of art can be and how art and science can work collaboratively. During the two years of this project, I worked with the Department of Chemistry and with Rosie Hood, a fourth year chemistry student who analysed the plastics as part of her master's degree. The project developed into a successful application for Festival of the Mind in 2022. I worked with Professor Tony Ryan from the Department of Chemistry and local sculptor Anthony Bennett to repurpose some of the old PVC from graduation. The result is a complex sculpture named Kunstoft after the German term for art and plastic. Anthony has created his sculpture by using the 1mm PVC which made up the original back panel of graduation. Anthony's creation is a chrysalis formed with what would have been waste plastic which is known as an orphan plastic because it's not recyclable. The PVC was shaped to form the structure with smaller pieces cut out. The small cutouts were achieved using a water jet cutter from the university's iForge lab in the Department of Engineering to Anthony's specifications. Back in the chemistry lab as part of her research, Rosie has also created a glue using the PVC which Anthony then used to glue the pieces together to make his sculpture. So as part of my project, um, I decided to make a glue to join the old pieces of PVC together. Um, for this, I decided to use solvent welding as it imparted the least stress on the already degraded material. So for this, I wanted to make a um, mixture of different compositions so I could strength test them and work out what would be the most suitable um, glue to join them together. As part of the Festival of the Mind in 2022, Kunstoft was displayed in the Future Cade exhibition space in the Millennium Galleries. It was then temporarily displayed under graduation in the library before going on permanent display in the Dainton building. This new artwork is now part of the University's Heritage Collection. It shows the University's commitment towards sustainability and repurposing material which is not recyclable and has saved this plastic going into landfill. Finally, to celebrate the return of graduation after its two-year absence, the University Library hosted a small event for all the key stakeholders to say thank you and to see Diana's newly restored work of art. Some of the original members of staff who helped during the commission also attended, such as former librarian Michael Hannon, who was instrumental in the original commission and installation. 
Speeches were given by the Director and University Librarian, Anna Clements. Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Professor Jill Valentine. Diana. And Professor Tony Ryan, who was a vital contributor towards the chemistry and festival of the mind strands of the project. One of the joys of being, uh, of being a professor is uh, you get weird emails. And, and I get more weird emails for the most because I tend to answer them. And so Emily sent me this email to say, we have this restoration project, um, we have this plastic, we don't know what it is, we don't know where it came from, we don't know what to do with it, can you help? And my stock answer to those kinds of emails is yes. So that's what we did. Before the event, Diana came to the library to see her work back on the wall, looking as it did in 1988. I showed Diana the displays I put together containing original material such as correspondence, photographs and fabrics which she had collected to help her decide which materials to use. Thoughts of Diana have always been at the heart of this project to transform graduation back to its former status and has always been the focus throughout. It's been a delight getting to know and work with Diana, gaining an insight into the commission and her life as an artist. Well, I'm absolutely amazed, mm. completely overwhelmed that it uh, matters so much for you to put it back. It's lovely. As well as gaining Diana's insight into seeing graduation back in the library, I invited Professor Mary Vincent to reflect on her thoughts about the conservation project and seeing Diana's work restored. Seeing Diana's work now after the restoration project is first of all just how good it is to see it back. The space felt very empty without it, and, and I'm sure I wasn't the only library user who missed it while it wasn't here. So it's very nice to see it back in situ. But I think like everybody else who's seen it, I have just been astounded by how good it looks, um, the, the vibrancy of it. The elements of graduation that I think stand out more, I think it's partly that what was there before is more enhanced. Um, so you always had the movement of the piece and I always loved that. I loved the way that the figure seemed to move across. I asked what she particularly feels stands out. The colours, which people have commented on, um, and those faculty colours and the way they're grouped and, and that, that's very striking. Um, so you can see the shoes and, you, um, and, you, and anyone who's been on a graduation platform knows that you spend a lot of time looking at the shoes. So if those kinds of detail, they do stand out, I think, much more. Graduation will always have a special place at the University of Sheffield and be an integral part of the university's heritage. The stories and theme of the artwork celebrates the end of the student's life cycle at the university and celebrates their achievements.